Hi. In this video, we're going to review the Dyson Ball Animal 3 vacuum cleaner. In the USA, there are currently three models of Dyson Ball Animal 3. There's the complete, the extra, and the base model. This is the complete model. It has gold cyclones and a gold brush roll. The extra has copper colored cyclones and a bluish brush roll. And the base model has silver cyclones and the bluish um, brush roll. In Canada, there is only one model, and it's this one, the Dyson Ball Animal 3 Complete. So what do you get with your Dyson Ball Animal 3? We've got it laid out here, and we are going to walk through it. Got myself a few notes here, because there's actually quite a lot, as you can see. So, of course, you get the vacuum cleaner, and uh, you've, you get the filters. They come with the vacuum. You've got nine tools. This is a combo tool, and the combination is a crevice tool and a dusting brush. The brush extends forward and pulls back to give you the crevice tool. We measured this at around 13 inches, which is a pretty good reach for a crevice tool. This is a stair tool. Velour strip on the bottom helps pull up hair and, and the like. Um, this is a tangle-free turbine tool with counter-rotating heads. It helps uh, not uh, allow hair and such things to tangle. We first saw this when we got our Dyson DC-65 back in 2014. We tested it, and we tested it on all sorts of crazy things like rubber bands and long twine and shoelaces, and we did manage to get it bound up. But for the most part, for the typical stuff you use around the house, it really does do a good job. Tackles kind of ground in dirt, and uh, you know you could use it on upholstery, maybe even vehicle interiors. This is a pet groom tool. Um, we don't have a pet, so we can't really use it uh, or test it. Uh, Dyson says it's best for pets with long hair or medium hair, and it helps remove loose hair and dander. This is the reach under tool. It's very long. It's also got this rubber neck here, and you can see, well, Good for you know picking up dust and debris and this bends so you could put this on the end of the wand or hose and maybe you know get under appliances or something it's, it's very long um, then we have the articulating uh, hard floor tool again this will go on the end of your wand pretty handy actually for um, doing hard floors and getting into really tight, narrow places, and it rotates uh, really well. It, it articulates, uh, you know, 180 degrees if you're vacuuming, so handy as well. Multi-angle brush tool, soft brushes. You could see how if you're doing, uh, you know, maybe the top of a high bookshelf or something. So that's for dusting. This is carbon fiber soft dusting brush row of very soft row of carbon fiber, I guess, filaments here, good for dusting. And a mattress tool, which is actually good on mattresses or upholstery, a couple of velour strips here. Now, those are the nine tools you get with the complete version. You also get two accessories. There's a tool clip, and it'll mount on the vacuum cleaner and hold two tools. And you get a bag. And, you know, with all of these tools, it's really handy to have a bag. You don't want to just pile these into a closet somewhere. You're probably, you know, going to lose some of them. So the bag is useful. It's got four pockets in the front. Uh, you also get uh, a couple pieces of literature. You've got some information on assembly. You've got some information on the Dyson Pet Groom Tool. And this is a regulatory compliance and safety information. Um, the manual is online. Uh, you don't get a manual. You'll only find it online, and you'll have to do your registration online as well. Now, that was the complete. Well, the extra, the model, the extra, has uh, not everything you see here. So we're going to remove five of these tools and put them over here. And remove the bag. And this, and we keep the tool clip. This is what you get with the Dyson Ball Animal 3 Extra. And now we move to the base model. Well, we're going to get rid of a couple more tools. Put them over here. And this is what you get 
with the Dyson Ball Animal 3 base model. I want to show you how the tool clip works. It attaches to the side of the vacuum here and it allows you to carry a couple of tools with you when you're vacuuming. Now a lot of those uh, tools we saw in the last clip won't actually attach uh, to the tool clip but the stair tool and the combo tool will. So to put the tool clip on the vacuum cleaner the first thing you have to do is remove the dust canister which we will do and we're going to take this tool clip and it just slides on right here. Uh, let's put the dust canister back on. Uh, there we are. Now we can put the combo tool here and the stair tool pops in. There you go. So how do you use all those tools? Well, you're either going to put them on the end of the wand or on the end of the hose. And the wand and hose are here, tucked into the back of the vacuum. Pull them up. This piece is the wand. And of course, we have an extension hose here that can pull out quite a ways. I'm going to take the stair tool here and put it on the end of the wand. And it should click into place. That's nice. It's got this uh, system where it's uh, secure. It's not compression where you have to, you know, you just push it on or pull it off. Uh, you can also take the tool and put it on the end of the hose. Now to do that, you've got to remove the wand, press this red button, this whole wand comes off, and you can put this tool directly on the end of the hose and use it that way. So, you know, the system is pretty versatile. Um, it, you know, this hose will fight you a bit, I must say though, you know, it, it, uh, you know, it stretches out a long ways, but it constantly wants to pull back on you. And the wand itself is a bit, bit long and it can be a little unwieldy sometimes. Putting it back in, you've got to press the red button. There we go. Um, so the system is, it's not perfect. It can be a little awkward sometimes, but, uh, you know, you've got great reach and that is how it works. Just a quick aside here. We were in the process of getting rid of all of the cardboard that comes with the vacuum cleaner when we ran into this small piece of a tool that we had missed. It was indeed in one of these little boxes. And I think this fits on the end of this uh, reach under tool. You can see. Uh, so, you know, I guess one of the lessons there is, you know, be careful, look in all the boxes before you throw something out. In addition, you know, this model, the complete model comes with a lot. So you really do have to be careful. There's all sorts of little, you know, boxes and nooks and crannies where something could hide. The vacuum really has very good cleaning reach. First thing we measured was the reach of the hose and wand. And we stretched the hose and wand out until such time as the vacuum either tipped or started to pull towards us. That's really the practical limit. You can see started to move towards us there. We got 13 feet and 4 inches. Now it's a little short of the 15 feet that Dyson say it has, but bear in mind the machine's new. This may stretch out a little more over time. And at any rate, 13 feet 4 inches is pretty long. Longer than the reach we see on most uprights. It's good for doing overhead cleaning and even a set of stairs. Also with respect to cleaning reach, of course, you have to consider the power cord and Dyson had provided a 35 foot power cord which is really quite long. You typically see you know any, anywhere between 25 and 30 feet. Sometimes you see 35. Well this unit has 35. The vacuum has two main controls. This is your power on and off so that's actually going to turn the entire vacuum on and off and this is the brush roll on off. Now sometimes you might want that brush roll off if you are cleaning a hard floor or maybe a delicate surface. The vacuum has two filters. There's a pre-motor filter and a post-motor filter. They're both rinsable in water and reusable. So that's nice. Now let's take a look at that pre-motor filter. I'm going to take the dust canister off here. Now this handle pops up. This is your pre-motor filter. As mentioned, you can rinse this in water. And typically you want to wait, you know, maybe 24 hours or so to make sure it's completely dry before you put it back in the machine. You don't want a damp filter going into your vacuum cleaner. Now getting at the 
post-motor filter. It's in here. Now it's a HEPA filter, which means it picks up a lot of really small particles. It's good, for example, for a household where somebody might have asthma or allergies, you know, or a, a place that has pets. Now I'm going to try to show you how to get at that. There's actually this uh, cap here that comes off. So we're going to give that a twist. And sooner or later, as I do this, the this side of the ball will actually lift right off. There we are. And you can see this is your post motor filter. Now we give it a bit of a twist. There we are. Comes right off. Again, rinsable in water. And when it's completely dry, you put it back in, give it a twist, and you put this piece back on. Sometimes it takes a little bit to line it up, but yeah, I think I got it, do I? Perhaps not there. Okay, that is right. You don't have to put it on too, too tight. Actually, if you put it on, like if I really crank it, it kind of affects the spinning of the ball a little bit. You may want to back it off. It's a little bit better that way. So. As you can see, we've got the two filters, and that's how you access them, and that's how you clean them. We've removed the cleaner head from the vacuum. There's a red slider on the underside of the vacuum cleaner that allows you to do this pretty easily. You can see the cleaner head here. Um, it has some interesting features. First, let's look at this large um, gold brush roll. Now, that can be removed from the machine. I'm going to try to show you the button here on the back, a red button. You push that in, give it a twist and you can pull the uh, cleaner head, or, or sorry, you can pull the brush roll right out. And you can see it's got these uh, rows of, uh, I guess, medium stiff uh, red bristles. Also these kind of blue bands. And I, I believe that that helps a little bit with keeping the hair from getting snugged up too tight against the brush roll. Um, this remember this brush roll has detangling technology and as part of that technology if we take a look inside the cleaner head itself let's see if i can show you that you see those red kind of ribs here those are what they call detangling veins and actually they're along the whole front they've actually marked them in in red every one of those red lines is a vein and the brush roll passes uh, the brush on the brush roll passes through those veins and they pull the hair off of the brush roll and send it up to the dust canister. So that's the detangling technology. We will test that and show that a little bit later. So let's put this brush roll back in. It's typically not too hard to do. You just push it back in and make sure that's flush there and then pop and that's, that's it. Now we also have another interesting feature on here. We've got this red slider. It's a suction slider and it controls suction under the vacuum. It also controls a couple of gates on the front of the vacuum cleaner here. I'm going to move it around a bit and you'll see two red gates that go up and down. So you've got two gates there. You can see that they go up and down. In addition, there are two uh, vents here. These are open and closed depending on the suction setting here. So the, uh, in the leftmost position, this is really best for medium and deep pile carpet and also rugs and delicate flooring. Middle setting, best for low pile carpet and larger debris. And the right setting is best for hard flooring and ground in dirt. Now we've noticed that on the leftmost setting, these vents are open and that's uh, resulting in a situation with the least amount of suction under the cleaner head. So sometimes if you're trying to push the vacuum and it's feeling like it's getting tough to push, if you move it to the leftmost suction setting, that can help. We performed a cleaning test on this low pile carpet that you see here. We created our own debris of what we would consider, uh, I guess, fine, small, and medium size. That was ground up Cheerios, flax seeds, chili flakes, and split green peas. We put that in about a five foot long line and ran the vacuum over it in about a 10 second pass.
When we create debris, we weigh it using this very sensitive scale. And then after the test, we generally uh, determine the percentage of debris picked up. Now, I think, though, in that last test, you can see that there was almost nothing left. There's really not much in the way to measure. And uh, with a result like that, I'm pretty comfortable saying you're at about 99 plus percent pickup, which is an excellent result. In this next test, we want to see how the vacuum performs on larger debris on the low pile carpet. The larger debris is um, Fruit Loops. And the suction setting is in the middle, so those two gates are up. That's the same suction setting as in the last test. Let's take a look. I think you could see that the cleaner head had a tendency to push some of that debris around uh, despite these two gates being open. I mean some of the debris made it through there but you know you're you're only talking about two gates. You haven't opened up the whole front of the cleaner head and this cleaner head is kind of low to the ground here. So you know the machine will struggle a bit I think with some larger debris. We do have a review of this machine on our website already and some people have been asking how well does this unit move on deep pile carpet. So we got a very deep pile carpet, one inch, uh, it's a white carpet. We put black rice on it and we put the suction setting to the left which is the appropriate setting for deep pile carpet. We were a little surprised how easily the machine moved on the deep pile carpet. It also picked up the rice and uh, we found it to be pretty easy to move around. The same test that we did on our low pile carpet with the fine, small and medium debris, we did on our tile flooring as well. I think it was apparent that there was almost nothing left on the tile floor after the test and again pickup was very very good. So how well does this detangling technology work? Well we took long black human hair and short white pet hair, put it on this low pile carpet and ran the machine over it. Then we took the brush roll out to take a look. We've done that kind of test on a host of machines that have this anti-tangle kind of technology in the cleaner head. Uh, I think the results we saw with the uh, Dysimal Animal 3 were very good. I think when we took the brush roll out, you can see that there were a couple of pieces of hair on it, but they were pretty loose, easy to pull off. In addition, I think had I continued vacuuming, that hair, uh, those couple of pieces would have been uh, removed from the brush roll and sent up to the dust canister. So all in all, we were pretty impressed. We performed an edge cleaning test and for this we take uh, chili flakes and we place them along a wall and then run, run the vacuum up tight against the wall to see just how much it'll pick up.
That was an excellent result. There was virtually nothing left. We've done this test over the years with a host of machines. Some of them will even leave an inch wide path along the wall. Um, you know, and that can lead to you having to maybe have to take out the hose and tools to clean up afterwards. So all in all, really good result. The dust canister is easy to empty. There's a red button here on the top. Push that down and the dust canister lifts away from the vacuum. Push that same button again. Bottom door opens up. Hopefully your dust and debris fall out. Like a lot of um, bagless machines, you may have to reach in and pull out some stuff. Uh, often your hair and things like that will you know, cause stuff to get tangled up in there. So that's a possibility. Um, close the door by hand and then you just pop it right back on the vacuum cleaner. It's got a reasonable volume, uh, 0.55 gallons. It's big enough that you shouldn't find yourself having to stop and empty it all the time. We've lined up some vacuums here so we could talk about weight. We've got four Dyson machines and at the end is a Shark. Now let's look at the first unit here. This is the Dyson Kinetic Big Ball Animal Plus Allergy. It weighs 19.8 pounds. It's a pretty heavy vacuum. I think it might be the heaviest one we have. Um, and it's fairly large. This is the Dyson Ball Animal 2, 17.4 pounds. The next unit over, the Dyson Ball Animal 3, 17.3 pounds. So it weighs almost the same as its uh, predecessor here, the Dyson Ball Animal 2. Um, the furthest Dyson there, Dyson Multifloor 2, 15.6 pounds. You can see it's a little smaller, so that's a fairly big drop down in weight. And just to show that, you know, not all vacuum cleaners not all uprights at least have to be that heavy. Um, at the end is the Shark CU561, 13.4 pounds, quite a bit lighter. Now, I think uh, the uh, Dyson Ball Animal 3 at 17.3 pounds, uh, you know, I'd call that uh, a little on the heavy side. Uh, we've been reviewing vacuums for quite some time. We often see uh, uprights anywhere 15, 16, 16 and a half pounds. That seems to be uh, I guess a little more typical. Sometimes the Dyson units tend to be a little bit heavier. I'm going to talk a little bit now about movement and I'd like to start over here with the Dyson Ball Animal 2. Now you can see just how easily that cleaner head turns when I turn my wrist. Uh, turns very easily and also the units it, it glides back and forth quite well especially given the you know the 17.4 pounds not really a light machine. Over here to the Dyson Ball Animal 3, right away, I mean it's got a narrower cleaner head. I would think that it would uh, turn maybe a little easier, but no. This requires more effort on your wrist to get it to turn. In addition, it's a little more effort to move it back and forth. Which seems a little odd. And you know, we're doing this right now with the machines off. The results are the same with the machines running. We have done that. And, you know, I'm guessing, but it feels a little like maybe there's, this cleaner head has a little more drag than the cleaner head on the Dyson Ball Animal 2. We do a noise level test for every vacuum that we review, and we use this digital noise level meter. We place it three feet in front of the cleaner head of the vacuum on this low pile carpet, turn the cleaner head on, get the brush roll spinning, and calculate peak decibels over a 10 second period. Now one of the louder machines that we've run into is this here, the Hoover One Power Evolve 78.3 decibels. This Dyson Ball Animal 2, 78.1 decibels. So it too is still fairly loud. Dyson Ball Animal 3, 75.7. So a little bit quieter than its predecessor here. That came as a bit of a surprise, but that's what the numbers tell us. Now, I still wouldn't say that the Dyson Ball Animal 3 is a particularly quiet vacuum cleaner. You know, there are some uprights that certainly are quieter. We usually see some of those maybe down at the 74 level, that kind of thing. Um, now, at the very end, uh, just really for interest's sake, that is the Tinoco Pure One S12. That's a cordless stick vac. It's not a full size upright or anything, but in low power mode, 61.1. So that's really quiet. Give you an idea how quiet a vacuum, I guess, can be. I wanted to quickly touch on some of the differences I've noticed between the Dyson Ball Animal 2 and the Dyson Ball Animal 3. I don't know that I've picked up everything yet, but some of the things I've noticed include a, a longer reach on the Dyson Ball Animal 3. Got a 35-foot power cord, Dyson Ball Animal 2, a 30-foot power cord. 
of course, the weight of the machines, while it is, you know, very, very close, we've got 17.4 pounds here and 17.3 pounds here. There's power. Uh, on the Dyson website, we see 290 air watts for the Dyson Ball Animal 3. We see 227 air watts for the Dyson Animal 2. I'm pretty sure in the past I've seen the Dyson Ball Animal 2 at 270 air watts. I, I don't know why I'm seeing 227 now, but in either case, uh, the Animal 3 is the more powerful of the two vacuums. And of course, there are substantial differences in the cleaner heads. The Dyson Ball Animal 2 cleaner head is, is wider. This uh, Dyson Ball Animal 3 has a narrower cleaner head. We've also got the detangle technology here, which is not present in the Dyson Ball Animal 2. And we've got suction settings here. So those are some of the differences I've noticed. In summary, the Dyson Ball Animal 3 is a worthy successor to the Dyson Ball Animal 2. In our cleaning tests, it did a really good job on almost everything we threw at it. did struggle a little bit with the large debris. I guess if you've got a lot of large debris, maybe that's going to be an issue. Um, also, the machine is a little hefty and requires a bit of an effort to move around, but if you don't mind the heft, this thing will tackle almost anything you can throw at it, and it does tick almost all the boxes in terms of being an effective vacuum in a household with pets. I hope you found the review interesting and maybe even helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing, and thanks very much for watching.